And she's going to roll a hit. <clears throat> oh, and this time she can aim. That's good. Mm -hmm. I get a 15. So what would you like to do as defense, if anything? I... Mm. <clears throat> You can There's choose, nothing I can do. I can. I would have to crit, so I'm just going to take the hit. Okay. Eight more damage to okay. the chest plate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Top of the order. Her again. And this time, her and her associates are going to be acting at the same time as a combination. She actually... <clears throat> what happens? I'll describe it for you. Um, Flitch is kind of... Uh, nervous <laughs> and she pretty much like looks him in the eye one of her arms grabs him by the shoulder and she kind of pushes him through the door um so how much damage do uh, does a person take when running through that sucker 66 mega damage all right roll it 24 and you hear her yell radio if you get through to the other side so he starts running, 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 running. And that's her action, pretty much, right? Because she's grabbing him, telling him to do. She's not going to have time to, to fire something off, either. I, I'm not... That's, mm -hmm. I mean, she only has a few seconds, right? Yeah. So that is their actions. Uh, <laughs> uh, Patrick, it's your turn. <laughs> oh, boy, I got to shoot. Um, yeah. Let's see. 24 damage to, to Flitch. <laughs> radio if you get to the <laughs> other side. <laughs> it reminds me of like those movies where it's like, okay, there's a there's a river running on the mountain. We might make it through or we oh. might drown. You go first. <laughs> so oh sorry. Uh just so you know from those on top of the behemoth, I guess you can't quite see because it hasn't been your turns yet and you've been mm -hmm. out of sight. Uh, the guys outside, I've had them do stuff too, a.k.a. they're not taking any more fire damage because their turn was getting the fuck out of the way, right? right. So, yeah. Anyways, please uh, go ahead, Patrick. All right. Um, he's going to... He said, oh boy, I can fire. I'm assuming he's going to fire or no? Um... Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna fire. Um, he's going to. He's gonna fire at at her at her uh, body. There's no. Uh, you know what? No, I'm gonna aim at her leg. Oh, okay. Left leg or right leg? Um, let's go for the left one. Where on the leg? Where on the leg? Yeah. Um, I would suppose bottom calf. Roll the hit. Right. Twelve or higher hits the uh, intended target. Um, what's the negative for that? One, two. Oh, her leg. Sorry, thank you. I'm just like, yeah, roll it, dude. Uh, no, uh, give me a second. Custom combat guy. I think legs are minus two or three. I'm gonna confirm. Do 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 do. Leg. Oh, it's only a minus one. Yeah, because it's a big ass area. But if you're just aiming for the calf specifically instead of anywhere on the leg, I'll make it a minus two. Right. You beautiful bastard. I crit. <laughs> Roll damage. Oh, that's 12 damage, though. Oh, uh, it's fine. So it just doesn't. No, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Give me a moment. <laughs> wow. So, oh, a a shot rings out, uh, aiming for her calf. Despite the uh, multiple arms and weaponry that she seems she seems to be showing off, her calf erupts in blood as a energy line pierces it completely vaporizing that meaty you know part of the calf completely leaving a bloody hole in which she screams and falls to the ground 
Oh, did not expect the, that. <laughs> yes. I'm going to just explain it out of character to kind of give you guys some context, okay? Yes. There are Borgs, right? You can be a full conversion Borg, which means all your body, you know, like Gino, the first guy that you, you fought, that Borg, head to toe, mm -hmm. all metal. You know what I mean? He's pretty much a brain and a spinal cord in a machine, right? Right. Partial conversion uh, cyborgs have certain portions of their bodies cybernetically enhanced. A lot of times it's the, it's the spine, the hips, the torso, a lot of times the head or the skull and the cranium. I guess she was a partial cons uh, c conversion Borg, and uh, the calves weren't protected. So there we go. Mega damage in, in against something that's clearly SDC. Uh, you have completely crippled her. Completely. <laughs> Luckily, the laser has cauterized a lot of the wound itself, so after that initial shower of blood, it doesn't look like she's leaking everywhere. But, uh, Tom, it's your turn. Actually, no, it's not, because I'm um, using that fire eruption, so I have half my melees. Okay, so we'll consume... Okay, all right, fair enough. <laughs> uh, Alicia and Bear... Uh, let's see here. Um, Alicia's up at the top, and she's going to wait for Al's um, decision to strike. As Bear stands up, and he kind of gets, he pulls his uh, vibro short sword, and he kind of stands by Mila, just pointing the sword towards the direction of Elizabeth, but it's clearly she's out of the fight, so he's... He's just on edge. He's waiting for her to do something. Okay? Mila, your turn. So, <clears throat> Inferno, let's say yes. hypothetically... Uh-huh. I, I love wanted... these questions. <laughs> <laughs> let's say hypothetically uh -huh. uh, Mila has the ab ability to uh, scramble radio um, mm -hmm. frequencies. Where would she go to scramble? Ooh. Uh, probably the best way to do that is... Um, I mean, you could kind of scramble radio frequency. You need special sensory equipment to do that, right? Okay. But you can MacGyver something up using perhaps the sensor suite that is located on the behemoth. Okay. And the best way, best way the access to that is in the pilot compartment. So that is where you would go. That is where she is headed. Okay. So um, actually, if it's okay by you, Bear's going to come with. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, this turn, you're able to get up, get past Elizabeth, and start to open up the compartment to the be uh, the behemoth's pilot's pilot bay. Excellent. Okay? Cool. Very nice. I love that. Just say I, I would do this. And then, <laughs> hey, guess what? You're there now. Goodness gracious. You're so, <laughs> you're so fast. Okay, so you open the door. You sit down. And I'm going to say it's going to take maybe the rest of your turn to do this. Mm -hmm. But I would like you to roll me a D100. We're going to do your scramble, ra scramble radio mm -hmm. uh, skill. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. I would, your success was dependent on how long it would take. Uh, but... I don't know, man. You take on this like a duck to water, so it's just going to take the rest of this turn. Uh, and you're able to, any radio frequency in the immediate area you have located and are starting to scramble it, starting to encrypt it. Um, so that's good. Now, normally that's really good, like you encrypt your own radio signals so people can interpret them. Hmm. But... Uh, you managed to do another frequency as well. Actually, another two frequencies that are in the area. So there's that. And with that, that turn, Elizabeth actually... Uh, hmm. You know what? I'm going to have her roll D100, whether she's going to be in pain or she's going to do something. She should be mostly out of the fight, but she might be tough. Hmm. She takes the. Oh, whoa, whoa! Just a second. My ears are acting weird. One moment. I hate when mine do that. They start traveling to different parts of my face. 
No, 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 no. Like, seriously, my right ear, there was like this weird, like, little thuddy. St oh, it's happening again. That's so weird. Is it your It's so, like if you get water in your ear and there's this weird oh. thuddy noise. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm good. Yeah, anyway. I don't know, maybe. Uh, but uh, she actually takes the term to kind of look at disbelief at her injured calf. And uh, AKA, she's in shock for the turn. Al, your turn. All right. Uh, I am going to kind of leap in the air and travel far enough to see the people outside the door, what that yep. situation is. Situation is both of them are running around the circumference. Okay, this is what you see. <laughs> you see two individuals in power uh, in body armor, man and a woman, mm -hmm. with their rifles raised towards a giant wall of fire. They're kind of circling around it towards the front of the cube itself. As you see another <laughs> figure <laughs> running through the fire. <laughs> Desperately trying to get to the other side. Looks like he's making it halfway. Of course, you also see the ATV that is parked uh, a scarce hundred feet away. Right. Are either of these people uh, da, 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 within fifteen feet of each other? No. All no, right. they're they're more spread out than that. All right. Um. So, is there any of them that looks like they'd be easier to hit? I assume they all look like the same. They both are the same target. They're the same size. One slightly smaller than the other, but not enough for the sake of a do hit. All right. No. Then I am going to... Uh, does any either of them look more dangerous or more injured? No. All right. Oh, actually, one looks... One's armor mm -hmm. looks... Uh, like it has some burnt, like burns on it. Okay, then I am going to launch four plasma missiles at that one. Oh my God, roll a hit. <laughs> four <laughs> plasma missiles. I oh am. Um, do it. Roll a hit. He's doing it. Fast and effective, my friend. Just do it. All right, hang on. <laughs> Six. <laughs> Yeah, that is enough to. Yeah, I'd say they're you're within fifty feet. It'll be close, but I'm gonna say you're within it. It's not aim shot. All right, roll damage. So you just want me to do like one d six times forty, or roll forty six times ten. Got it. All right. Uh, four d six. So that would be a hundred mega damage. For you know what, I'm giving him a chance to defend himself. Mm. Real quick, he has one attack. He's going to try to make a shot at one of them. <laughs> oh, you know what? No, wait. He might not see you coming. If he can't see the attack coming, how is he going to have time to respond? Especially if it's within fifty feet. Um, roll me D100, Squee. Sure. If you get under seventy-five percent, I'm going to say that there's no way he would have seen you. Ooh, he mm. did see me. Okay, that then maybe when you shot in the air, he saw you. Right, and then, whoosh, boom! All right, so he's gonna try to make an aim shot at the uh, <coughs> at one of the plasma um, mini missiles. Uh, he normally has a plus three. They're hard to hit because they're the size of an arm, which is a minus three. So it's a straight one d twenty. Needs to get. Over higher. Gets a 14. Okay. All right. So that is enough to destroy one of the mini missiles. Okay. Okay. There's still three. Now there's a percentage chance of that detonating the entire volley in the air. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give me just two seconds. I so rarely use this rule. It's. Just in the main rule book, I'm taking a quick peek at it real quick. Real quick, Inferno. There we go. Shooting missiles. Uh, if one missile is detonated, there's a 45% chance that his explosion will detonate the other missiles in the entire volley. If you use another missile, it's a 75% chance, but he's not doing that. So 1D100, 45 or lower. 62, oh. no. So I'd like you to reroll 3D6 and times it by 10 because I don't know which one okay. to drop. I don't want to drop the 6, so just reroll 3D6. That is 120. Okay, so that's even more. Okay, so uh, your three missiles 
slam into the man. A giant blue billowing crackling light fills a 15 foot sphere. And when it dissipates, there is no evidence of a person existing. Huh. You have atomized them. Their armor had like 60. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, then. So, well. Gratz, he's dead. <laughs> That's the one down. <laughs> I don't want to kill anyone. I fire four <laughs> plus well, It's self defense. It's self defense. I'm not giving. I'm not. Oh, he's in battle him. mode. He, he he. Morals are put to the side when you're in the middle of a fight. Yes. So. Of course. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Now Alicia's gonna take a shot at the other guy. She's gonna get her, her uh, over to the edge and she's gonna fire on the other one. All right. Plus five. Okay, yep, she hits him right in the chest, doing nine points of damage. Oh, it wasn't a good shot. She winged uh, his shoulder armor, um, so that is that. While Bear is um, guarding the between the, uh, the conference room or the, the living area and the pilot's compartment, he's kind of in between there, kind of blocking the door to make sure no one gets in to disrupt you, Mila. Okay? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, top of the order... T oh my god, Al. This is what happens when you roll all your six <laughs> attacks true. and roll low enough. But hey, now what do you want to do? So, there's <laughs> another one there. Uh, yeah, I'd the like to fire four uh, armor-piercing rockets at her. Or I think okay. it's at her. Now she knows you're there. Yeah, it's mm. a her. I don't know if it'll be her long enough, but we'll see. <laughs> right. All right. So. All right. So roll to hit. Same same deal. Same. Eight. Okay. Eight. That's enough. If you're the same distance from one guy, you're the same distance from her. Right? Mm -hmm. Only fair. She's going to see it coming. So she's going to try to hit. Same modifier. She needs a 12 or higher. She nice. also gets a 14. So we need to roll 45% to see if she detonates the whole deal. Uh, roll D1, 1D100. <laughs> Very close, but no. Unlucky. So please roll 3D6, and it's yeah. the fragmentation. So uh, no, it's, are those it's, D4s? It's, it's, it's armor piercing, so it's D4s. 3D4s, oh. yeah. Yes, so roll three, 3D4 times 10. Uh, 40. That's enough, because thanks to Alicia's shot, Yep, okay, so this one isn't as... <laughs> Alright, so three fragmentary um, missiles hit the ground nearby her, right? Uh, shreds of high-powered uh, material fill the air, completely shredding this woman uh, in multiple pieces. She collapses into a bloody heap, uh, chunks of her littering... A, a ten foot surface area. So there's that. So she is also very dead. Ah, awesome. We're gonna go through one round of this. One round. That's great. I love it. So that's Al Patrick. What would you like to do? Um. Good job, guys. By the way, locking uh, exits, uh, destroying everyone. All right. I'm. Patrick is actually going to, uh... Alright, I'm going to roll see what I do, because I'm also going to be rolling for shock. I'm going to give myself a 50-50. Sure. Um, if I roll low, I can actually be in senses, so 50 or low. Nope. <laughs> he did not expect that leg to have a hole through it. <laughs> uh, does. Okay, so he's taking a moment to process that. Yeah. Understandable. Tom! I'm going to slowly, slowly start walking towards Elizabeth, who is on okay. the ground. <clears throat> that is my turn. Uh-oh. Okay. Al? There's so there's this orc. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. there's this orc. Yeah. Uh, I happen to have four rockets left. Uh-huh. I wouldn't want them to feel left out of the party. 
You know how it is. Uh, I'm gonna fire my four rockets okay. at him. All right. I'm an equal opportunity Roll. employer. Uh -huh. Nine. He can't. He's too busy being on fire, like <laughs> running through fire, and he's heard explosions. He can't really take enough defensive maneuvers because he's trying to figure out how to get out. So he doesn't get to shoot shit down. Right, so roll 4d. Well, it's 2d4 and 2d6 because it's half and half. Oh, of course. Well, please. So please, don't let 60... me stop you. Just just go nuts. <laughs> but how did... Yeah. So 60 and uh, 70. <laughs> oh, Flitch. I could never pronounce your name consistently, and it doesn't matter now because... <laughs> um, you're in a place where there's greater fire <laughs> and also a lot more fragmentary rounds. And pieces of you are going to just burn up in uh, Tom's fire. So, uh, uh, folks, I'd like to slip out of combat now, if that's okay by you. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah, think it's You have right. now defeated everything. <laughs> uh, in fact, Elizabeth tries herself to call in... She hears the explosions going on outside, right? And she demands a response. Uh, as you know, you're moving towards her, Tom, and ev everything is getting settled. She, she is calling out for Fletch or for anyone to respond to her, and she tries to get an outside channel. She's unable to do so. Thanks to Mila. Mm -hmm. So, uh, she's at your mercy. I'll let you have the right of way what to do. Of course, she has big problems, but uh, up yeah. to you guys. Go ahead. I'm just going to, when I go close to her, snap my fingers. Fire uh -huh. will dissipate. Uh huh. And then I will look at her, kind of bend down, try and get really close to her face. Uh huh. You don't threaten us. You don't know who you're fucking with. Oh. Roll a d100. Okay. She grits her teeth through the campaign. And she says, Don't kill me. Or, or what? You'll send all of those mercenaries after us? Like you threatened to do? How about this? How about this? Let's go back to negotiations. This time we're negotiating for your life. Uh, okay. I do all the work for Prince Jasper. If I go, he'll be pissed off. He'll find out who, where you are and he'll hunt you down. Uh, ah, God. Uh. She's not bleeding, right? No, but she's in critical condition regardless. Yeah. Um, yeah, she um, she is kind of tough, so she hasn't passed out just yet. It is her calf that has been vaporized, but regardless of the lack of bleeding, human beings are meant to have their calves, and when they don't have it, there's yeah. problems. <laughs> they, they start going into shock and all that. Yes, so she's only able to blurt these words out uh, briefly. You can mm -hmm. talk with her, but you don't know how long she's going to take before she nods off. Okay, yeah. before she slips into something. So, that that's her response. That's what she manages to get out. I see. Well, I guess we'll just have to fix you up then, won't we? <clears throat> and uh -huh. nobody will find out about this, will they? Uh, <laughs> she manages to give a small... N Wait. If she's confirming what you said, no one will find out about this, will they? Your instinct is to be like, no, they won't find out. Okay, so she shakes her head a few times before she passes out. Okay. Um, team? <laughs> Ow. Uh, we'll come in and he'll say, of course, we have no reason to believe she won't tell anyone, but he'll uh, of take off his gloves and start providing first aid treatment. Yeah, 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 roll me, roll me paramedics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's that, 35. She needs Ooh. surgery. She needs surgery. 
um, something that you might be able to do. Right. Uh, maybe. Uh, you do have the medical facilities to help you with that. Uh, suffice to say that she is she has slipped into a, a, a shock, uh, like a coma, um, a, a shock, a state of shock. All right. Right. And although the external bleeding has stopped, there has been enough tissue damage and arterial damage where, um, based on your medical knowledge, in order for her to survive, you will have to amputate her leg. Got it. Okay. All right. I, uh, guys, I... She has... Oh, let, uh, let me just give you more information if sure, that's okay. Sure, sure. All right. She can stay in her current state. You're thinking maybe about 10 minutes. Every minute after that, before you start the surgery pr procedure, the likelihood of her slipping, there's a higher and higher likelihood. The longer you wait, the higher that shock is going to be a coma, and then it eventually will be death. She will probably die in the next hour. She will, but, uh, of course, uh, the ball's in your court. Um, yeah, let's fix her up. Well, I've got an idea, actually. Mm -hmm. We need to know what her intentions are. We can't just, as much as I don't like killing people or anything like that, I mean, uh, they aren't in combat. It's weird. Al has no problems killing people in the heat of battle. It's battle. It's They brought on themselves. Yeah. He would Dude. not like to kill this one. But we can't just let her go back to this. It's not like we can just trust it. Well, you said nothing will come of this. Well, okay, go back to your shop. Squee. Mm -hmm. Squee. Hold on. What we should do is we should perform the surgery, make sure she's all top-notch and everything. Keep her under so that we can get the refugees out and everything and then send her on her way, you know, after all that is done. Um, so we have basically bought us e e enough time to do that, correct? You do understand that this is not just a simple matter of getting some refugees away from the town and never coming back. In addition, she might die in surgery. Yeah, she might. That well, yes, that's going to happen either way. She's going to die mm. or not, you know. Whether yeah, if I don't try and treat her, <laughs> okay, she's going to die. Good point. <laughs> but uh, but no, the point is, is burn is that we, if we're going to kill Prince Jasper, we are pseudo taking responsibility for the well being of the people in this town until this entire situation is resolved. It's not like we can take fifteen refugees, leave, kill Jasper, and just forget the whole thing. Which means that even if we do what you suggest and then let her go, what's going to happen with that? We're going to have to come back at some point, and are we going to come back straight into an ambush or a shot or whatnot? So, I do have a suggestion, but I'm not quite sure exactly what we do with it. She has not well. seen my face. I'm pretty sure she hasn't seen, and in front of you, could, you could uh, confirm this, has not seen the medical lab. No. So, no. So we well, could patch her up. Yeah. Uh, I could act like a doctor who rescued her from this and works for Jasper or something and see what she intends to do next. I like that idea. I like it. Um, I don't know. You, I don't know. Other, I, you guys can discuss as a group what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, uh, Crean and Piff, you want to put in your two cents here. I have no idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, know, I right? scramble radios. <laughs> I'm really good at scramble radios. Um, okay. God, this is a big heaping pile of shit. Um, <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so let's, let's, okay, so we need to get top, top priorities, obviously, um, is getting the refugees and killing Jasper. <sighs> what, what, what was our original intention after we killed Jasper? Basically, all we, what, what we're concerned is we want to kill Jasper, obviously. But when Jasper dies, there's going to be issues. In other words, who's taking his place? What happens to all the mercenaries in the town now that they don't have someone paying them? Will they go on a rampage on the town? And will this make the situation worse than it is now? We want to ensure, however it happens, that killing Jasper and, and, and wait, wait, this situation oh, is better. Were we going to try and find out about his mother? 
That was one of the options, yes. Mm hmm. Uh. But squeeze, all squeeze saying is like, if we burn our bridges in Greencastle, right? If shit goes bad here, or we piss someone off in here, it's gonna make it a lot harder to do that, that, that fixing phase. Oh, right, right, right. I'm just trying to see what our end goal is here, so we can move forward in that direction. And mm -hmm. um, so, okay. Oh God. So, um, I, I, Welcome to Hard Decisions the Game. I have, I have an idea I've... that's a bit half-baked. Let me throw it out there and see what you guys can form from it. So our what we have in our hands, assuming she lives, is someone who knows a lot of things about the city, mm -hmm. about the mercenaries, about Jasper, about all that. What's one way to make sure she cooperates? Make it look like <clears throat> she's working against Jasper. What if we save her and then somehow make it very obvious that she was involved with rem with moving these people out of the city so that if Jasper were to find out, guess who he's going to blame? Then she'll have no reason not to work with us. Not join us or anything, but at least work with us. In other words, Ooh, if she's implicated for her. helping a bunch of people escape the town, whose mercenaries is she going to go hire to do something? How 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 are we supposed to make it look like she's working with us? Told you it was mm. half baked. <laughs> well, yeah. she did tell us that a certain shipment for her is coming in. Ooh, yeah, that is true. Um, in general, um, this is using her as a chip of some kind. I don't. I'm I'm having a hard time seeing that. Um. Any any sort of like trickery or any any of that business. Um, should we discuss about you know life and death and things like that? <laughs> like she did just try to kill us and things like that. How how should we go about this? Because um. Like, let's just say if she does live, and a as a player and character, generally making things, you know, m more pleasant living conditions instead of just murdering people would be more beneficial. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but I I'm I'm trying to see like if she does live. Um, it's. I, I I'm I'm sort of at a loss here because like it's also um this isn't really helpful at all just more or less fact now that we know that she she kind of has importance in in the city we do have the voice changer we can always I don't know come up with ideas later on for that mm -hmm. that is just, true yeah. <laughs> that could be some kind of implication type thing that we could do. Oh, like um, a radio thing, like get the get the refugees out of here oh. while Jasper's mm -hmm. away. Or we could make it more subtle than that because, oh. uh, uh, okay, obviously I don't think that it would look suspicious if she blatantly says, hey, get them out of here. But if she's the one that tells mercenaries not to be in a certain place at a certain time and then they go missing, it wouldn't be hard to put two and two together. In other words, it will look at, we don't want to make it overly suspicious. Like, mm -hmm. hey, look at me helping these people escape. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, the truth is the easiest thing to do would just be to kill her. Because, you know, we kill her. I'm sure not many people know what was going on here. It saves us a lot of trouble. We can be like, I don't know what happened. But Al's conscience, uh, he can't. He, he has serious, and of course as a group we can decide to, but he has serious problems with killing someone once the fight's over. Mm -hmm. I'm just worried about like, who else outside of the the mercenary she brought know that this is going down, you know? Yeah, um, we did, is there a driver in that particular vehicle or was that everybody there's nobody <laughs> all right all the all survivors are bleeding on your behemoth or not uh, bleeding, but dying 
Well, if we do save her, maybe we can get Pamel to do some mind trickery to find out if she has any. Oh my gosh. If anyone else has. Mm hmm. She is in a weakened state. This she should is. be pretty susceptible to suggestion. But we would have to save her. Yes, absolutely. Well, so I think, I think, no, should we just try saving her? I mean, we can always, we can always kill her. If I, I, I will put it this way: <laughs> unless the group stops him, Al is going to be trying to save her. All right, and it, as as a realistic thing, Patrick's not going to stop him. He he's. He's pretty gung ho. Like I'm, I'm speaking of like killing her and stuff like that out of character. Patrick right. would be doing any of that business, <laughs> right? And that's why I was like, out of character, it's the easiest solution. But in character, Al's got issues with that. <laughs> so, did I back us in, into this corner? Not really. Okay. We were back. To, uh, if you think about it, we were backed in the corner the second we went to that chop shop. Yeah. Yeah. So there was nothing you did. Yep. Okay. So uh, she could have just died in the fight too, you know what I mean? Right? Yeah. Or she could have gone yeah. away or whatever. But this is the situation. So what do you guys want to do with it? Well, why don't we do this first? Because if she dies, then we'll save ourselves a lot of more a lot of <laughs> complicated yeah. choice. Yeah, let's making. worry about the surgery. Let's see yes. how it happens. Yes. Okay. Let's do mm -hmm. that. <laughs> okay. So Um, I will be mm -hmm. right back. All you right. guys do your thing. I'll be back. Okay. All right. So, um, Squee, I'm going to have you roll a paramedics check. Mm -hmm. It is going to be at minus three, right? Got it. Because remember when we were talking about things that Al can do and Al can't do? Mm -hmm. This is like battlefield surgery in a way. Now, you do have, now the penalty is only minus 30 because you do have a controlled environment, right? Mm -hmm. The only problem is that the clock is ticking. I don't know how many times you've actually, your character has done this before. Probably not very many. Probably it's not. up to you, yeah. right? So I think minus 30 is pretty fair, don't you? Absolutely. I would say that uh, my mm -hmm. character m may have seen this done a lot of times. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe mm -hmm. did it once, but he is a bit nervous doing something so complex. And I'll also let you know, mm -hmm. just a failure mm -hmm. will not guarantee instantaneous death. There might be other consequences. There's a sliding scale. Got it. What happens depends on how much you succeed and how much you fail by. Cool? Mm-hmm. All, All right. right. If you're comfortable, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, all right. So I will do that. Whew. Nope. So how much do you fail by? Uh, six. That's 36, then? Wait, was no. that with a plus 30? 30? No, 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 no. It was uh, basically my, my paramedic is 98. Minus 30 is 68. I rolled a 74, so I needed to get under 68. Oh, okay. So you need to get under 68. So you mm -hmm. failed by six. Right. Okay. Let me think. Huh. You were able to remove uh, her leg from the knee downward. There are no complications in regards to the surgery itself. There was a small period in which you weren't able to tie off a vital ider, uh, artery perfectly. Mm -hmm. In addition, she is a partial conversion cyborg, which means that her body, her entire body isn't completely flesh and blood, which means you're not, when she starts showing some, res, some signs of response, you're not too sure exactly how to make it. You have stabilized her, however, but she is currently comatose and you do not know how long she will be comatose for but she is unresponsive but alive got it okay all right so al would uh finish the surgery mm -hmm. uh explain that he did the best he can it's kind of up to her now he has no idea when or if she will wake up Okay. Yep. So for now, she's going to be here. Yeah. Moving her, and I assume this is right in front of, moving her would be dangerous. Yes. Moving her would complicate things significantly. Mm-hmm. All right. So what's the plan from here on? 
Um, loot the shop. <laughs> loot the shop. <laughs> no. One. <laughs> yeah, don't don't all speak at once, guys. Jeez. Uh -huh. Um Listen, I'm still trying to think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah I leave, leave, leave my players alone. I am actually I'm a player too. What I was saying it kind of jokingly, but I'm actually, teasing. it might not be such a bad idea to pay another visit to that shop, see what we can find. If she's here with her goons, it's possible there's no one there. And if there's um, someone there, we can or... act like... Yeah. If you true. want to be... The, just saying, if you want to be the least conspicuous, we might not want to go to a shop that a woman is missing from. Well, what we could do is I could go by the shop and see if it's clear, because no one's seen my face. Right. I could just be a customer looking for a cyber doc. I will tell you there's also a lot of racism. <laughs> That's fine, but racism is not suspicious. It's the bring, norm. Um, bring uh, Alicia with you and have her pretend that uh, you are her servant. Oh, that's perfect. a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Ooh, perfect. yeah. And, and basically, the idea is we we check the shop for anything of use, interest that would help us in our cause. And if no one's there, if someone's there, we assess the situation, but probably don't risk it. All right. Uh, okay. And of course, and of course, the best. Um, you, it's eight. It's eight at night. Uh, I would assume in front of the the surgery took at least an hour or so, something mm -hmm. like that. So we'd probably mm -hmm. have to wait till the morning. Because obviously probably. we're not going to go by that shop at midnight and be like, well, we were just looking for a cyber dog. Um, next up, um, the vehicle that's just sitting outside. Well, actually, let's get to this point right now, folks. All right. Um, so soon after the surgery is completed... Uh, three other vehicles come on by. These ones in an off-white color and red. Uh, one of them is a truck, and two of them are uh, additional hover vehicles. These are members of the Crown uh, security personnel uh -huh. who have now kind of uh, been to the area of combat and they are looking to speak with the occupants of the behemoth. There were very clear signs of battle, and they want to know what happened. Okay, I have a quick question. Um, I, I had thought of doing this, but I, we were more pressed on the other stuff. Would it be safe to say we brought the ATV inside? Sure. Okay. That That is, once again, we can retcon a little bit of stuff, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. And clearly... I mean, while you're doing surgery, the other guys aren't just standing around with their thumbs in their uh, up their noses, right? So yes, it's fair to say that you're able, and there's just enough space to bring the ATV inside the cargo bay of the uh, behemoth. Pretend to be drunk. You were firing off your missiles for fun. <laughs> Wait. Mm -hmm. wait, 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 wait. Here's a good question. There are chunks. Well, well, wait, wait. Oh, there. Oh, that's right. There's chunks of people. Never mind. <laughs> you murdered someone. I, I was yeah, actually going to say. The first thing that is coming to my head is, um, we were defending ourselves. Somebody was trying to break in. No, no, no. First thing that comes to my head. Real quick question, Inferno. Is there enough left to be recognizable? Of uh, people? Yes. No. <laughs> okay, then we tell them that it was an internal matter. Some people in our group had a disagreement. They fought us. We killed them. It's an internal matter. It's none of their concern. Of course, they might have objections, yeah. but we treat it like it was someone with our group. We had a disagreement. It ended violently. Seems legit. Seems like something mercenaries would do. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you guys want to handle that? Do you want me to handle it? you want Mila to handle it? Um, <laughs> I think I've talked It was enough. an internal <laughs> matter. <laughs> <laughs> Closes the door. Goodbye! Uh, Leave a message. Uh, um, I kind and roll of, for initiative. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> my, my only thing is, I kind of think that it might still be wise to keep Al's face out of this. Well, yeah. you're still. We can say this is happening just when you're finishing mm. the surgery, so you're still uh, uh, assessing her and whatnot. We can have someone else talk, a non-NPC yeah. talk. I'll do it. Okay, I'll do it. All right. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I don't need to role play the entire scene, but uh, we'll have the conversation between you and the uh, the representative for the crown, mm -hmm. the Kingdom of Green Castle. So, what exactly do you say? Uh, that it was an internal matter. Um, one of our one of our members were caught stealing some credits from the rest of it and the rest of us, and we had to take matters into our own hands. He was going to get away. Um, a few of the um, <clears throat> other uh, guardsmen, uh, security personnel, are surveying the scene around the behemoth, taking a look at the few craters and chunks of blood and whatnot. And you're like, ah. Oh. But you're the, the, the representative, uh, the, the person that you're speaking with, a oh, young man and his... Uh, say early 30s, uh, wire thin, uh, pockmarked uh, cheeks, uh, kind of homely looking, really just greasy black hair underneath his mask, kind of clinging to his forehead. A very, uh, and he doesn't look like he has a very <clears throat> amenable disposition. As he says, uh, how long have you been in Greencastle? Uh, we arrived today. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, what's the name of your little fucking group here? Oh boy, out of character. <laughs> I don't know what to call us. Oh, <laughs> Hana. <laughs> uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, bad. This is like smacks. <laughs> no. All right. Um, uh, we don't really have a name. You can kind of make one up, because we really don't have one. We don't. Yeah. Make it up. Improv skills. Ask Mila. She's good at that kind of thing. <laughs> Mila. <laughs> What'd you? We are, um, oh, do you want me to say it in character or just tell you what our character. name is? Out of yeah. character? Um, we are the, the double tasers. <laughs> the double tasers. <laughs> Not just one. Wow. We're two steps from awesome. Okay. <laughs> double tasers? Is that double what you're going to tell us? Double tasers. Right. Yeah. It started as a, like a mom and pop mercenary group. Oh, Jesus Christ. The guy rolls his eyes. He's like, I don't want to hear the story behind this. Just <laughs> listen. Mm -hmm. You can't detonate shit so close to Greencastle. What if one of your fucking missiles in your internal war hit one of our buildings? Hmm? Yeah. There, you were, when you signed up, you were supposed to, oh, just give me a moment. Uh, give me two seconds. Inferno, scroll down. <laughs> there we go. When you signed up, you were supposed to speak with Jameson Stennett, and he was supposed to debrief you, but you were too busy probably fucking around into actually to do that, weren't you? So now, yeah. I'm finding you. You got a problem with that? No, no. How much, how much do we have to pay? I'm sorry. Pauses for a moment, he says... Well, you can pay the crown, or you can give me ten thousand credits. Mm. Ten thousand credits, and uh, you know, maybe I'll have you speak with Jameson himself, right? Smooth this whole misunderstanding over. You know what? Sure. Okay. Sure. Why don't we? I hear somebody typing. Are they typing to me? No, no, no. no I'm just saying. No. God, if only we were okay. rich. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I will do that. Okay. Uh, let let me let me grab it from inside. I'm I'm sorry to be a bother. Um. And Tom's going to quickly go inside, grab uh, grab some of the cash, and then mm -hmm. hand it over. Okay. It goes all right. I'm not kidding about that briefing, though. You actually want to work for Green Castle? You got to get in line and you got to follow the rules, all right? Of course, sir. Fucking, Sorry. Fucking venturing mercs. Jesus fucking Christ. And then he 
mutters, and after one last scan of the area itself by uh, the, the, the Crown Security Forces, they withdraw back into Green Castle proper. All right, take off 10. Uh, you probably have already taken off 10 yeah. grand. But all right, you've have. dealt with that situation. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, correct. <Woo! laughs> all right. Yay. All right, so um, we have a comatose Elizabeth. Uh, and you guys are going to be waiting until the morning, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Elizabeth, it, um, so <laughs> uh, let me just make sure I got the sleeping arrangements. Everyone has their room. I'm assuming you're not having James T. sleep in the compartment area, right? Are you going to have him sleep in the med? Uh, in the. Uh... Ooh, no. He that would be to. a very bad. Yeah, I, I'm sure Why he not? does. Uh, because we'll leave him alone with that lady and he'll kill her. Um, no, I, I won't. No, she has big enough problems already. I just like my spot that I made. Then, James, you can have your spot and I'll take this spot over here. Okay. He says. So you're going to sleep, are you going to sleep in the cot next to him? You know, yes, that's actually a funny question I was going to ask you that I think is, is going to be harmful, but would make perfect sense. So, uh -huh. in the world of rifts, uh -huh. do elves do that trance-like thing instead of sleep, or nope, do they just they sleep? sleep. Okay. Al's going to consistently try to go into this trance-like thing that he feels like he should be going into. <laughs> Uh -huh. And basically you just sit there and get frustrated that nothing's happening. But he's going to try that until he falls asleep. Okay. <laughs> it's working. It's working. It's like, right. I'm supposed to be in a trance. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. All right. Okay. okay. Or you, could, you can always ask the person who doesn't sleep. Well, no, the, the whole thing is that his concepts of what an elf should be are all from Tolkien. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 He, so he feels okay. like he feels subconsciously he should be doing this, but he doesn't know why. All right. Sure. Unless you guys in character want to change the situation, right? Mm. But or out of character. But all right. So James is going to be asleep. James, Al, and Elizabeth are going to be in the med, uh, the med bay, for lack of a better word. Everyone else is just resting as per usual. Mm -hmm. We'll have the mm -hmm. night pass on. Yes. Yep. Okay. So the night pass is on. A moment, uh, Squee, we gotta find out how long it's gonna take you to, to quote unquote, uh, <laughs> fail fucking to meditate. Yeah, yeah. So roll me. Uh, let's make it fun. Um, if you roll twenty five percent modifiers, right? So uh -huh. if you roll twenty five to zero, it takes you four hours to get to sleep, and then if it's twenty six to fifty, three hours. Twenty, you know, like like you would. Anyways. Every 25% chunk is an hour. So just roll me a D100. Fuck Got it. Inferno. Just 35. tell him to do that. Then 35. Okay, so three hours of frustratingly trying to do this, and you fall asleep. Now, let me look up something and roll something. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I have a feeling James is going to try and kill her anyway. Oh, God. No. Um, <laughs> no. Okay. Not at all. Why would, <laughs> Why he, would he, do he ever do Why? that? James T. is a stand-up individual who doesn't want to hurt anybody. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm not checking to see what his prowl skill <laughs> is. Nope. Nope. Not seeing how quiet he can be and then giving Al a chance to detect it. You know, guys, no. I'm going to take this opportunity to let you guys know that how much I trust Inferno, that he's always straight mm. up with us. And I love yes. that. I appreciate that. He's such, mm. such a good DM. He is. I am. Yep. Definitely. I, I always keep things on the up and... Oh! Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> mm -hmm. You hear little hands clanking across <laughs> the ground. Do you choose to open your eyes? Yes, I choose to <laughs> You open. see James T starting to, like, 
he's like look glancing from you to Elizabeth, from you to Elizabeth, as he's out of his cot and and moving towards her. And when he looks to you and sees you open his eye, he's just like, oh, and then just turns around and goes back to his cot and sits down. He says, mm, stretching the arms, and then there's that. So. Uh, the rest of the night passes by uneventfully <laughs> after his attempt at homicide has been, um, <laughs> prevented. You don't know if it was homicide. I'm saying it, but you don't know what he was going to do. When, when he does that, I will calmly, but firmly, mm -hmm. simply say, James, I was trained to do what you might, not saying that you are, might be thinking and I most certainly know when someone in the same room has less than ideal motives. Just don't. You have no idea what my motives are, he simply says, and stays in his corner for the rest of the early, early morning. So, Thank God he doesn't have a prowl check. Pardon me? I said, thank God he doesn't have a good prowl check. <laughs> he had 65%, dude. He uh, had okay, a he had a good prowl check. check. Never mind. I, yeah. well, thank God that the dice love me. Yeah. Mm, thank, well, thank goodness fate happened, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> what's the plan for the morning, folks? The ball's kind of in your court. Um... So, I guess Alicia and I are going to go try and uh, look in the shop. Okay. Yeah. And other than what, other than Alicia and Al, what, what, is there anything in particular that the rest of the players want to do? Or do we want to resolve this first real quick uh, and then? Mm -hmm. No, I was just going to say re resolve this because I honestly don't have any, at least for me, I don't have anything okay. that I want to do. I do. Never mm -hmm. mind. Patrick does. So what would you like to do, Patrick? Um, with a piece of paper in hand, uh -huh. um, he's going to be knocking on Mila's door. Knock yes? On. Mila? Mm -hmm. Um, are you busy? Way No, come in. All right. And he's gonna whatever open the door. <laughs> I'm not. Is it a handle button? I don't know. Whatever. It's gonna go open. He's gonna mm -hmm. go in. Um, and uh, I'm sure Mila's perceptive enough to recognize that it is the picture of a very colorful flower in his hand. Yeah. Um, you will also recognize it is your picture of a very colorful flower you gave to him. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's going to go, um, I, I was, uh, pondering about a lot of things. Um, wouldn't, would you be okay if we worked on your hammer? Oh, sure. What are we going to do with it? Are we gonna oh, put, are we going to put flowers on it? Pretty much. I was thinking of really neat designs and stuff like that. <gasps> she starts, like, clapping and bouncing. <laughs> and um, I, he would also say, also, you want to hit things harder? Yeah. Then I'm going to need a bit more time with it, but I will definitely get some design stuff for it as well. Hopefully... Draw draw up some designs for your hammer, and we'll try to definitely get that going. Mila pulls out a bunch of crumpled paper and starts drawing on it. <laughs> and um, for the GM, I don't know how much you mm -hmm. would be susceptible to this, but I mm -hmm. do have a skill that I have very rarely even mentioned. Oh, let's or do it! Used. <laughs> I love the using seldom used skill. I want to try to have it use everyone's skill at some point, but sometimes. Um, anyways, what this one has not been used, surprisingly. Oh, well, we're going to dust her off. Um, it is 
weapon engineer. <laughs> oh yeah, it is a very used very often. You're right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I read up on the description of that thing. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Basically, yeah, I, know, I right? can freaking like basically jerry rig already existing weapons to do other things. Yeah, like explode and <laughs> shit. It's awesome. So, um, having a suite of electronic things and probably understanding how weapons work in fields like that, I was thinking maybe having it have more of a um, destructible damage or maybe even an unstable, more damaging field. Sure. It would take time. Of course. But you have the skill and you would have the means... Sure, yeah, okay. Roll me a skill check right now. Alright. This is for uh, weapons, I'm assuming? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, then. um, Uh Did you fail? I did fail. Okay. You'll try again. What I'm going to do, though, is allow, like, once you succeed, Mm -hmm. like, maybe you just have to keep practicing with it, like, for a few days, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A.K.A. roll another skill check the next game day or something like that. Okay. But once you got it figured out, I would see no reason why you can't increase the field, the vibro field around her hammer by an additional dice. Mm-hmm. So I think right now it's like what, like 2d4 or 2d6 or something like that? Yeah, I think it's 2d6 if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Getting my sheet up. Getting sure. Um, for... Uh, Mega damage? Yeah, or, mega damage. Yeah. Uh, 2d4. Yeah, so it'd be 3d4. <clears throat> Add another dice, yeah. Yerp. But uh, that's in the future. So, okay. Yeah. Are, uh, anything else doing with the hammer? Uh, do you want me to... Um, mm-hmm. The other thing, um, Kriana can have all the design that she wants, but I do have a particular particular items that could also be used for this, and I believe they are called um, alchemist dyes. Gold and yes. red. Yes! Ooh. That's a nice little design. Gold! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Calm down, Mila. <laughs> Don't wet yourself. <laughs> they, are, they are permanent designs, and they will not go off. They, it's, They'll never fade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meal is like internally screaming as Patrick's saying all these things. <laughs> Probably externally screaming a little bit too. <laughs> yeah, it's so internalized that he can hear it. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm curious as to the design that you pick, but yes, you are able to to definitely impart any sort of design upon the hammer. Um, once you turn that mega damage field off, you lose your fingers. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Oh. All right. Oh, wait, no. Yeah. All right, want me to um, continue on um, with the, 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 the scouting out and uh, entrance of, the, uh, of Elizabeth's cyber um, workshop, for lack of a better word, her store, her shop? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I am going to be basically guarding Elizabeth while okay. Al is gone. All right. So, navigating the crowded, loud, um, reckless streets of Greencastle, you are able to, and getting the directions from your former companions, you and Alicia, uh, manage to uh, find yourselves in front of Elizabeth's shop, which is a converted townhouse. Uh, all the windows themselves are sh- uh, are closed shut, um, shuttered closed, uh, and it is in a, a relatively main thoroughfare of the uh, of the town itself. It's located around here. On the front door, uh, the door itself looks like it. It is. Uh, a solid uh, metal uh, is a sign quickly flipped over that says closed, call again later. And that's it. Everything looks shut. And 
that's that. So what would you like to do? Everything looks shut. Great, great description, Inferno. Jesus. All right. <laughs> anyway, uh, two questions. One. Sure. Lock on the door. What does it look like? <laughs> tumbler, electronic. Looks like a tumbler lock. All right. And is there <clears throat> like an alleyway to the back or something? N no. Unfortunately, not. There might be a back at some point, but there's no alleyway. Uh, <coughs> this town. This shop is smack dab in the middle of two main streets. Uh, if you're going to be doing anything, people are probably going to see you. Right. Uh, and there's people around, I'm assuming. Oh, yes. Very much yeah. so. Then Al Street's would, busy. Al would uh, shrug to Alicia and say, I don't see any way of getting in there without causing a big ruckus. She nods, or a key. Yeah. Well, that was that idea. Hmm. It was worth a while. And but. we'll, uh, yeah, and then uh, unless Alicia has anything, yeah, we'll head back to the behemoth. Okay. Uh, as you uh, head back to the behemoth, you do pick up a few um, passing conversations, a few of them having to do deal with the ruckus that happened just across the bridge last night and a bunch of theories as to what happened and complaints uh, by some individuals about you know, they thought they got the handle that they stopped fighting so close to the city and all this other stuff, but just rumblings and rumors and mumblings that you pick up on that have to do with you. All right. Um, so, <clears throat> back at the behemoth. I was going to say, once we get back to the behemoth, we're going to search the craters and uh, her and the ATV and whatnot as best we can for any sort of key. Probably should have thought about that before we went, but... Uh, there is a keychain on, uh, in Elizabeth's red jacket, there is a cred stick, a personal computer, uh, a, uh, and, uh, yes, a keychain that has about eight physical keys on it. Um, none of them are tagged or labeled. Sure. And, uh, what else? Uh, there's an... <laughs> The chunks of things, no, you you recover nothing. Like, the amount of damage you have right. done has even seriously disrupted the weapons that they were carrying. Like, there is nothing of salvage value of that, unfortunately. Uh, I'm just trying to think, of course, Elizabeth, uh, the red jacket itself, uh, it's a little um, scorched slightly um, because it was a very low hanging, like it covered most of her body, so... The part that was covering the calf kind of got singed. And uh, her goggles, of course, as well. Mm. Other than that, there is nothing else on her body. Got it. Well, uh, so we have some keys. And this is out of character. So we have some keys that might work. Obviously, we're not going to get in there without causing a fuss during the day. We could try going back at night using the keys. Do you guys think this is something we should care about? or? Hey, Squee. Hmm. Um, may I suggest something? Sure. You might want to check for hidden compartments. Oh. Your character had some. Why wouldn't she? That's a good point. She she did have one on her um upper arm. What? She might have one on the other arm. What would I even use for that paramedic or? Mm, no. It'd be like a reverse concealment. All right. Well, I do have that. So let's see here. Um... You have reverse concealment? No, just kidding. Be... <laughs> Give me a second to type in it. No. <laughs> uh, it's okay. concealment 44%. It's now you're dead. I have concealment 44%. All right. Roll it. Bam. No. You don't find any other compartments. All righty. Hey, Piff. <laughs> I don't yeah. find any other compartments. <laughs> You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> okay. But you guys are discussing your next plan of action. You still have the uh, the forgotten refugees. You have all sorts of other things that are complicating these matters. Uh, let me know what uh, you guys want to do next. Well, there's one thing we should uh, settle before it bites us in the butt is uh, obviously, you know, Tom was guarding her and I was there the other night, but we need some way of restraining Princess in case she wakes up. 
I don't think she's going to be in much of a condition to do a whole lot, but then again, she is a Borg. Is so. Hmm. Why not? Let's make it thematic. As you have the discussion, you hear her stir. Well, fuck. <laughs> because it's the morning, she slept overnight. I had a. I. I'm like, eh, I'd be around this area, but I do. I want to have it happen exactly while they're having the conversation. And the dice told me yes. Okay. So, uh, Al would, go. unless anyone out of character or anyone in the party is going, going to uh, stop. Uh, um, Al's gonna like shoot everyone out of the room that she's seen the face of. <laughs> Even yeah. James T. Even James T. Uh, before you. Uh, Convince him. Um, okay. James, look, we need to find out what she knows and what's going on and what her plans for you were so we can stop them. I can't do that if you're here. I need to pretend that we're, I'm not connected with you guys. Just go with the others for now, please, and be quiet. I can help you get information from her. If this doesn't work, I'll be more than happy for your help. But let me try this first. Kill her. She's evil, he says as he leaves. <laughs> Al will uh, share a glance of like uh, with everyone else. <laughs> um, is everyone else in the group complying? Is there? Yes. Oh yeah, I'm. Okay. I'm leaving. All right. Yep. Uh, and then Al will say like, "Stay close." Wait, Mila, you're complying. Grana, I'm, I'm muted. Hi. Okay. I'm. Yep. Hi. I'm. I'm complying. Yes. Okay. Cool. We just want to make sure. All right, sorry, keep going, Squee. All right, um, then uh, he, he'll say stay close, and he'll very quickly put on, like, a hospital mask like he's doing stuff. Okay. All right. Her eyes kind of flutter open a little bit. She. Uh, w did you give her any painkillers? I would say yes, because he's not a okay. beast. Uh, and, and when it okay. flutters open, I would be easy, easy. You've been through a lot. <sighs> She looks at you suspiciously. She says, who are you? Where am I? You're in town. Real quick. Sorry. Inferno. The name mm -hmm. of the village with the tyrant guy. Green Castle. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Sorry. The tyrant that wanted to <laughs> kill James T. Oh, Fenton? Fenton. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, I got a couple tyrants <laughs> yeah, here, dude. I got a yeah, list. There's a lot of tyrants. Like, might like, have to be. i <laughs> assuming that Lord Mez Fromline is a tyrant. He might be, but oh my god, I love that, though. All right. <laughs> Green Castle. No, wait, the other one. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Fenton. Al, Al will uh, very softly say, you're in Fenton in a hospital. You were very, very badly wounded. There's no hospitals in Fenton. What are you talking about? <sighs> I, I will shrug apologetically and say, well, I like to think of it as a hospital. Uh, amateurs. She says, wait. How did I get to Fenton? This doesn't make any sense. There was a, a, a very large robot with legs. It was traveling and attacking the countryside. The mercenaries had a fight with it. When they hit them, they found you aboard. You were very badly injured and not kept well. I don't know if you were a slave of theirs or or something, but you were brought here for medical care. Roll me D100. Sure. And your convinced check is 75? Yes. She nods her head a little bit. Do you, so you don't know who I am? I'll, uh, Al shakes his head. I'm sorry, I've never seen you before. Good, she says. She sits up regardless of your protests and her arms, and she looks down at her leg, and she winces, and she's like, did you do this? Yes, I had to. You would have died if I didn't amputate it. She nods, and she says, there's a cred stick in my jacket. It has 100,000 credits in it. They're yours. As a thank you. 
in addition, I would like transportation back to Greencastle. And I don't suppose it's too much uh, to ask that you have, you could give me a supply of painkillers and I don't suppose you have any sort of cybernetic interweave. I might be able to do the cybernetic interweave. I can certainly do the painkillers, but you're in no condition to travel right now. She says, If you have the cybernetic interweave, do you have any sort of experience with bionics or, God forbid, cybernetics? Al will shake his head. I'm sorry, no. Well, this wouldn't be the first time I'd have to do this, she says. I could perform it on myself. Give me the supplies that I need in order to help rebuild my leg. And I can promise you there'll be more money than that 100. As a caregiver, I really must object. That is an incredibly dangerous thing. And he's going to sound incredibly concerned. Uh huh. Roll me another D100. All right. <laughs> the ruse is going well. She says, Listen, Doctor. If someone insisted, uh, would you like? Would you restrain me if I wanted to go? You're right. I can't leave, but you can't provide me the assistance I need. You could assist me though on the procedure. She says, "I have vested business interests." She says, "Wait. Get me a radio at the very least. Let me contact my people. Let them know I'm here." Of course. Um, I will send one of my nurses for it. It might be a few minutes. We are, as you said, not exactly the best equipped. But, of course, if you need a it's radio... It's fine. Uh, and then Al will uh, go to the door, say something in a low voice, like, you know, just uh, get a radio, radio, but wink, and then sit back down and then say, there were survivors of the attack they headed back towards Greencastle. Will you hmm. be in any sort of danger going there? I don't know who they were to you. She shakes and she says, no. I'm not in any danger. They will be, though. But you don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> I'm safe. Thanks to you. And she gives a thin little smile all along her stretched face. She looks around and she says, this is, I'm seeing a lot of your equipment here. It's more than the normal frontier, uh, a frontier clinic. Who supplies you? She asks. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, Al will actually look a little sheepishly and he'll say, have you ever heard of the coalition? <laughs> she nods and she says, Yes, even out here, many people have heard of the Coalition. I know them well. I used to live up north. I was a doctor there in one of the free cities. We had um, some complications with the Coalition. And uh -huh. I... You stole to... their equipment. I get it. It's fine. I don't care. I don't work for the Coalition. I was just curious, she says, making conversation. Al will look nervous, like, you know, like he's not sure she's not going to rat him out. There's no one to even tell. Don't worry. Of course. Give me a moment. I'll be back. We'll get you a radio so you can contact your people. Painkillers, too, she says. Uh, Al will, um, I would assume she's on some sort of IV. Yeah, an opiate, too. Morphine, yeah. probably. A and uh, he'll, he'll, he'll point to it and he'll say, you're on the maximum safe dosage for now. If you have extreme discomfort, I can look into other methods. You, she pauses for a moment. <clears throat> I will be patient because you have already given me great assistance. The amount that you're giving me is fine for an adult woman who is fully hmm, biological. However, my unique components 
interfere with that. Please increase the dose by 20%. Trust me, it won't hurt me. I'm a doctor too, just a different kind. Al will um, look like he's considering it and then kind of reluctantly shake his head or nod his head and say, I suppose that it's not too dangerous and you certainly are more than a normal woman. He will say <laughs> with a, a, a bit of a, a wink. She raises a fourth arm. She's like, don't flirt with me, barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Al will go over to the uh, the bag and kind of put his body in between the bag and her and say, oh, you never know. And uh, can I try to slip a sleeping med into the IV, a sedative, uh, while, while I'm fiddling with the dose? Sure. The only problem is, is how are you going to, like, administer it, like, grab, like, a needle of it? Like, okay, here's the thing. You don't mm -hmm. have your bionic arm anymore, right? Right. So you still have sleeping agent in your lab, right? Mm -hmm. But is it going to be right next to where the IV is? Probably not, right? You'll have, have to go there. I'm not saying it's impossible, right? right? But, like, you'd have to go fill a syringe with it, go to where she is, and then put it in where she's not noticing, right? She's been making a lot of contact, like, eye contact with you. Mm -hmm. You'll have to distract her, wait for her to her, her... Like, this is what I... Okay. It's up to you. We can try to do this. How about this? We'll make it like a little skill challenge. How about this? So you could do one prowl, like conceal check, we'll say, right? Mm -hmm. And that's you doing this while you're talking to her, right? And you're concealing it in your hand and all this other stuff and administering it. One possible, one successful conceal ch check and boom, you got it, right? Mm -hmm. Or you could do three successful convince checks, like um, personal personality checks, right? Mm -hmm. And that's you're verbally distracting her enough in order to do it. Okay, so I would absolutely go for the convince checks, uh, just because that's more uh -huh. Al style. One quick question though, uh, before I make that choice, is there, in your opinion, a uh -huh. because I have her on opiates? Theoretically, yep. if I increase the dose enough to not be fatal, yep. I could make her yep. loopy. Yep, I will give you plus ten percent to your okay. to your roll. Then, so that's what yep. I want to do. All right, so three convinced checks, so and then get under eighty five. Eighty five, yeah. All right, so what oh, crap? Okay, then keep going, keep going. Three. All right, so he succeeded by two. So this is what happens. Mm -hmm. You up the dose, but. Perhaps you're a little too eager. Perhaps it slips your mind. But her, the effects, the new effects of the opiates mm -hmm. don't quite click in before you begin, right? Mm -hmm. So she asks you, well, what are you getting now type of thing? So what's your response? Because she notices you go over to the counter, right? right. And she, she still notices you picking up something else. So she's asking about it. Uh, I will say, say a clotting agent. I wasn't able to fully tie off one of the arteries in your leg. That's why you've been out for so long. If it were to start bleeding again, the medicines, the anesthesia I had to give you causes you to, your blood to be a bit thinner than normal. I don't want you to bleed out after I worked so hard to save you. Good explanation. All right. You're, you succeed. Okay. Sleeping agent is in her. You leave. In a matter of minutes, when you come back, she'll probably be asleep. Okay, so uh, I will explain everything to the group, what happened, and I'll say, obviously, the second she gets back to White Castle, she obviously intends to destroy us. What do we do from here? James T. has a suggestion. Want to hear it? Hang on. Hang on. Yes, Can James. I guess? <laughs> Brush her hair. N no. Damn it. <laughs> it involves repeated stabbing in her general area until she stops moving. Kill her. If you can't, I can. <sighs> uh, Al will just kind of sigh and he'll say, James... I am not going to go through all the effort to heal her, just to murder her. 
That's because you're weak! He yells. We killed something you couldn't. <clears throat> oh, that shuts him up. Okay. <laughs> no more input oh. from James T. Oh. No more, no more input from James T. Okay. <laughs> uh, but he's looking at you like he wants to kill you now. <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, so everyone else, um, I am open to suggestions. <sighs> um, I think the, I wouldn't say most reliable, but probably the, um, if you want to persuade her to do pretty much anything, it would probably have to be through other means than just trying to convince her. So... Um, Pamela would probably be the best thing for that. If you want to trick her, that would be extremely troublesome and probably not particularly going to be the best idea. Uh, blackmail would would be something that's probable, but we've done that before and that has bit us in the ass. Yes, it has. Because <laughs> we are generally... <laughs> We are we are too kind for. for such <laughs> We're not things. ruthless enough for blackmail. <laughs> there is an advantage on this one, though. We don't need to keep it indefinitely like we did for Nathan. We just, if we chose that route, we just need it to last long enough to do what we need to do. Uh, what if uh, in Inferno? Because uh, I'm not familiar with with Pamel, and I would have to, you know, we'd have to ask her. But you would know this. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. Her suggestion abilities. Uh huh. How powerful? Like, for example. If she were to use her suggestion abilities while she's in a weakened state, could she convince uh -huh. her on a at least somewhat permanent basis of, like, for example, you helped do something you shouldn't, and now Jasper wants you dead? No. What she can do is this. She can... She's a master manipulator, right? Mm -hmm. She can use a combination of uh, <clears throat> hypnotic suggestion... Um, bio like uh controlling a person's body like making them blind making them deaf disorienting them uh telekinesis reading surface thoughts uh empathy manipulating their emotions much like what she did with coins how she got him to talk right by con mm. offering an aura of trust right or a fear she also can mentally possess a person for a period of five minutes at a time. Which means her body goes limp and she goes inside them and she manipulates them like a puppet. It is an ability that she picked on her last level up. She does not have a chance to use. But Jesus. that's something that she can do. Guys, she asked for a radio to contact her people. What if we give her the radio and the second she contacts her people, we possess her and then have her talk about an attempt to assassinate Jasper? Hmm. Boom. Now Jasper will certainly want her dead. When we want, but would, we're killing Jasper, but, right? Are we doing? Yes. No. Yes. Are, the, are point, the point Jasper? is the, the, the point is that... no. The point is this woman has very valuable information, mercenary placements, what they would do information on how Jasper works, information that we need to do this right. That information will be freely given, theoretically, once she thinks that her best bet is for Jasper to die too. But the best way to do that is to make it in her best interest that Jasper die too. But... Oh my god, that opens up a huge can of worms and Jasper will want every single one of those mercenaries next to him so that he won't, won't die. Jasper won't and that know. Will... He's on a hunting trip. How, how will he not know? How we're, would he know? We're telling. We're telling. We're, we're having her tell her friends, her mercenary buddies, okay. which in then can get in contact with Jasper. Okay, then maybe not an assassination attempt, but something that incriminates her. Something that won't raise up his suspicion that someone's after him, but something that will incriminate her so that when he gets back, he's going to want her in chains. I'm going to say that this. Is... Mm -hmm. uh, 
I think anything to do with trying to get her to be incriminated by Jasper is a bad idea, mainly because we don't want Jasper to know anything about us. Yeah. Positions, any sort of defensive things, we want him mm. to be off guard. Anything mm -hmm. that would be sort of like, there's something against you, he will be that much more aware. Then what do we exactly. do with her? We can well, go to the old James T idea. <laughs> Shut up, Inferno. That, yeah. um, we do have an entire village that would probably would like some sort of justice. Um, they can do with her uh, what they will, sort of business. Um, they might even have better ideas. They might just kill her, like the last one did. But that is not on our. our Right. Yeah, that's that's not an our onus to actually kill her or not. That's a question. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Piff. Mm -hmm. What we can do is keep her down, go into the town, get our get the people out, go back to the other town, the the first one, and basically that will get us a good will of them for one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and uh, two. Um, it will get the, the people out of the town and nothing will actually be, like, alerted or anything like that. Unless something happens in the town, of course. Like, the, she will not be part of being any sort of alert. Okay. I like that idea, actually. We'll keep her mm -hmm. stated. We'll keep her uh, tied down, though I assume she has superhuman strength, so we would probably need to tie her down with quite a bit. Um, I would suggest through drugs and mental manipulation of... Pamela, we could probably keep her generally sedated and you generally could. unconscious. Sorry, yeah. Pamela also has a psychic ability to induce sleep. Yeah, yeah. and and, and so. Al, Al would be all for that too because he would believe that drugs can stop any size creature if you have enough of them. Um, That's what they yeah. did to Tom. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. Poor drug um, baby. I, I I agree. I, I I like the plan. So yeah, I mean Al's a spy, so he always goes for complex, intricate spy espionage Bullshit. things, but sometimes <laughs> keeping them drugged Shit. is probably the best way to go. <laughs> How is everyone else on this? I think that's probably the best idea we've had so far. Hmm. Yes. Agreed. I am right. neutral. <laughs> I'm James T still floating on the whole killing idea, but I he can see that the committee has decided to choose in another direction and he says, fuck you. No, I'm oh. just kidding. <laughs> that sounds like James to me! That's our James. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I right. must remain consistent. Oh. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. So let's go with Plan B. I mean, Plan A. This is Plan A, which is so now you're going to try to get the forgotten refugees onto the behemoth, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm mistaken, what you let me let me. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you want to use the color cloaks that you have to use as a, ru a, a, a as a ruse, right? Mm. Other human-like individuals, either like in pairs, so maybe like Al and Tom and Patrick and Mila and Alicia and Lee, perhaps, or yeah, it would have to be Alicia and Lee because Bear and Pamel are um, DBs. Mm. Yeah, they would be. You would be entering Green Castle with these color cloaks on. You. Scoot through the hidden hole to where the refugees are hidden. You give them the cloaks. You give them. You guide them now as your own people to the entrance, and hoping that the the guards, whomever is there, mis don't recognize their faces and instead recognize their clothes and whoosh, mm -hmm. scoot them out the front door. Pretty much something right? similar to that. Um, maybe not going through the the hole so many times. Uh -huh. um, maybe have them sort of out in like alleyways or street corners or something that's out of the way so it's oh, not right. constantly going through this secret door and sure. also when we get them out of the city have at least one to two of us um, with like a large pack of uh, coats just to be like halt sort of thing and then like one of us can actually just be an outsider so they know that the group is an outsider Wait, 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 wait. I was all grayed up into that last part. All right, so... I mean, you're going to... You're going to pretend to be an outsider to tell them to stop? No, no. Um, if... If they, like... If there's, like, a gate check or something for yeah. any particular reason, 
yeah, yeah, if yeah. one of us was with the 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 not one. Oh, yeah. okay. So if you're stopped for whatever reason, you can prove that it was literally you who just went through the door because, yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. And so they're not completely on their own. You're with them. Okay. Yeah. So this is what I like to do to speed things up a little bit, right? What we're going to do is pretty much the equivalent of a fun little skill challenge. So what I would like you guys to do, if you're up for it, is to look in your character sheets and during this entire operation, pick two skills that you think would be applicable, right? You know, convincing or, or flirting with people to distract them. Um, using, uh, you know, uh, your proud checks or your concealed <laughs> checks in order to figure things out. But really, any skill that you can rationalize into this, let me know what you want to pick. What I would like you to do is just to roll, you'd be rolling two skill checks, one for each of the skills, right? And your combined success determines the outcome. And, uh, you know, enough successes means it goes on without a hitch, and the failures show that there were complications with the plan, and then we role play, you know, solving those problems. Does that sound like a fun idea to you guys? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, cool. You're either then being like, okay, you grab the first group, now roll me a D100, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So take a moment or two to go through your character sheets and think about you know, what skills might be applicable to this situation, and we'll go from there. And we need... Two it's skills? also still raining. Oh, okay. yeah. It's starting to break up a little bit, but the weather might be to your advantage as well. Do you think sense of balance or navigation would be better? Uh, who are you asking? Uh, UDM. Oh, okay. Uh, sense of navigation would... I can see sense of navigation working really well with winding throughout this, uh, the streets and figuring out what, where north still is. And mm -hmm. that way kind of twisting around so whoever's watching your group won't be able to get a really good beat on them. Mm -hmm. Sense of balance? Hmm... What do you think sound sense of balance could be used for? Well, it is raining. Oh! Slippery streets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. All so, right. So, like, making sure that you're, you're still on your feet and not... You still don't slip moving. and um, create, like, some kind of commotion that will attract mm -hmm. attention, that kind of thing. Yeah, kind of plays like a bit that. into Prowl, which I was thinking of doing. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean... Honestly, both of them will be equally as effective. So pick whatever you think is fun. Or whatever you have balance. a higher... Yeah, okay, fair enough. I think, I'm going to grab a drink. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I think I can finally use my disguise skill. Yes! Dun, dun, dun. Oh my god! Woo! Yes! This After is, all this, is this time. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to try... I'm trying to create more... Because I, I, I haven't gone through your character sheets. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... A lot of stuff is mo is driven by you guys, right? So I right, can't be, yeah. oh, arbitrarily yeah. be like, uh, make a disguise, Mila. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Why? <laughs> just I'm just going to the bathroom. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't care. Pre Fine. Pretend you're not pooping. <laughs> pretend you're someone else who's pooping. <laughs> <All right>. uh, <laughs> just, okay, crying. Let's stop, <laughs> let's stop crying. with the pooping. Uh, I'm going to just grab a drink of water real quick. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I did miss one part of that. Do we choose one skill or two? Two. Two, two skills. Got it. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we're locked into that. What do you mean? What you do you mean locked do more into than, that? You want more skills? You want to make more rolls? No, I'm just... I am just considering, like, to, if he's going to, like, throw situations at us and then we have to roll for it. Or... Oh, I think what he was suggesting was that... Um, He's not going to throw situations at us until we know the results. Basically, what we're doing is picking two skills, justifying why they work, and then it's the dice rolls themselves that will determine if we have complications. Not yeah. like we choose the skill and then he throws things at us and we have to use the skills we chose. I don't think it mm -hmm. works like that. Okay. So. Um, okay. So I can use like a skill conjunction or something like that. I, you'll, you'll have to ask him on that one. Think I can use backflip? <laughs> hey guys, Yay. how about mathematics Sorry. advanced? <laughs> you rationalize it, man. No, uh, I, I, I think know. I've chosen mine. 
Because All mathematics right, so advanced, I might be able to, but really, I'm not. Gotcha. So, has everyone decided what skills they want to use? I believe yes, um, so. Yes. Okay, so let me set the scene for you. Because you would get this information when you're discussing in this with the, with the forgotten refugees, right? Uh, luckily, everyone who knows your face in the Green Castle is dead or unconscious. Mm -hmm. So now, some a few individuals um, of of the of the refugees are allowed inside the city, and um, like Joshua, for example, the poor man who has his jaw broken. He has actually kind of buddied up with, uh, with a mercenary group. He's kind of doing work for them. Or actually, it's not really a mercenary group and just a mercenary person. Uh, the fellow that you might have heard the name before, Skiller. Mm -hmm. he, um, he kind of does jobs for Skiller. And therefore, if he's working for Skiller, he doesn't have to tend the fields kind of thing. There are only a couple other refugees who have that sort of freedom. The rest are really very much in hiding. But many of the town are strangers, and the ones that recognize him, them might not be so prone to ratting them out, right? Uh, it depends on who they come across, right? But thanks to the kind of, cha not necessarily chaotic, but an orderly um, environment, the the rain and the fact that you're using disguises I would say you guys will be rolling eight rolls together as a group right two each mm -hmm. if you get five successes you will be successful every failure uh, over like well so I guess it's it's three successes right or really much three failures if you only get three failures, no problem. If you get four failures, then there'll be a problem scene, which you guys will have to fix, right? Mm -hmm. And any additional failure will create more problem scenes. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll just keep track of successes and failures here. All right. And who wants to go first? I would like to. Mm-hmm. All right, so, so what's the first skill you're going to use? Sense of balance. Okay, what's the threshold? Okay, you succeed. All right, so that's one success. Okay, and the next one is Prowl. Mm -hmm. And this one is going to be... Okay, now for the other three, what I would really like to do is actually not have everyone roll their two at once because then the last person, if there's all successes, what they've done means nothing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you get more successes than necessarily, I think I might throw in, um, I don't know, a positive scene or something like that. I'll, 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 I'll figure something out. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. You know what? <laughs> Boom. That's what we're going to do. All right? <laughs> August okay. is going to fucking show up. <laughs> no, I'm going to rationalize it. I should I should have just shut my mouth, but... This is great. Okay. All right, so let's just keep doing it in order. Who wants to be next? I'll go. All right. Kriana, okay. where are you picking? I'm doing my disguise, and I need to get uh, below 60. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes! All right. And what's your next one? Um, oh, shit. Um, I don't know. Would... Uh... <laughs> I, I don't know. You got so happy at the first one. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Right. Sorry. Uh, okay. uh, would Streetwise help? Or yeah, Streetwise do, would help extremely well. Or I could do Prowl again. What does Prowl mean? Or I could... Prowl is moving around sneakily. You know. Oh, sneakily. should I? Would Prowl be more? I'd be better no, at that. You know what? I, whatever. I whatever is a higher percent. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. I'll do Prowl then. <laughs> so okay. below an eighty-two. All right. Holy Jeez. shit, you're sneaky. Holy fuck, Holy girl. Cow. Yeah. You're, uh, you're more sneaky than the spy. All right, yeah, you are. <laughs> all right. So, um, uh, all right. Who wants to be next? I'll, I'll do it. I'm going to have to ask you if this is okay. So, since we're in very colorful clothes, mm -hmm. and since we got this from specifically Tyrath's temple, 
Uh huh. <laughs> I'm going to be using lore, demons, and monsters and what? language draconic to guide them through the street as a cult. <laughs> <laughs> I will allow it 100%. Okay. <laughs> You're fucking amazing! Uh, you mean like as a horse? <laughs> no, as a cult! What's a cult? C U L T. A cu C U L T! Of people. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, my oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's Squee. He just had a brain fart live here. Oh, I I've never been part of a cult before. This is exciting. There's going be a few people <laughs> So, that was the part called between uh, 1983 and uh, <laughs> it was okay. We did a lot of drugs. Anyway, Demon's Monster, uh -huh. 74. Oh, oh my <laughs> God! <laughs> All right, what's the next? Language dr dr Draconic is an 84. Okay, you can roll 84. <gasps> All right, and Al, what are you uh, going to do? I'm going to do uh, detect ambush skill to try and avoid any uh, any problem areas. Mm-hmm. Okay, I like which that. Which is a seven D. Oh. Oh. Okay. And I'm going to do uh, charm, probably to talk my way out of that failure, which is a seventy five. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh come on. Oh. Oh, All right, Al, bringing the team down. Oh. That's okay. You got enough successes, and you succeeded by one. I can't. I can't work as a cultist. Apparently, I... no. no, no. Maybe this You're... is what happened: is that just you didn't get the heads up that Patrick was going to do the whole cult thing. <laughs> You're like, wait, there's a change of plan. Oh fuck! But that's okay. Um, as a team, you guys managed to succeed. Which means each individual, including the wounded ones, uh, the heavily wounded ones, are able to uh, navigate the streets under your direction and get through uh, freely. Mila, as you're gathering up the last of the group, or as you're assisting the last of the group, and the rest of the, who whatever priority members want to be with her, feel free, right? Mm hmm but you see a familiar, mousy-looking man sitting hunched over in the drizzling rain that is finally starting to let up. He's over. Uh, he's he's standing over a a wooden overhang of a building, and he has one hand on his pocket computer, kind of holding it up against his chest, and the other hand is typing away at it, and he's frowning incredibly at the screen as if he's trying to will it to work uh, regardless, but it doesn't seem to be complying. Uh, you spot him, but he doesn't spot you at this point. Okay. Um, so, is he on like a bench or, or something? No, he's standing actually. Oh, he's standing? Okay. Yeah. So, um... so, he's not a very tall man, actually. He's probably about five foot seven, which isn't too bad. It's not incredibly short, but below average height mm -hmm. uh, for a man in this period. So anyways, please continue. Uh, Mila would probably um, see him, recognize him, mm. kind of sneak on over so oh she's standing God. not too close, but kind of uh -huh. close. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. All right. And if he didn't notice, she'd probably get progressively closer. <laughs> Like roll scooch prowl up. check. Roll prowl check. Prowl check. This is a perfect chance for prowl. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. You. He is so distracted, and you're so sneaky, and there's reverberant noise around you, and everything like that. Your chest almost presses into his left shoulder. That's how close you are without him noticing. Ha. <laughs> 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 she screams and jumps back and looks around. <laughs> he drops his, his little personal computer into the muddy street below, and he looks at you and goes, What the hell are you doing? I was just seeing how your project was going. That's not how you say hello to normal people, he says. It's not? No, he says as he oh. goes to the ground and picks up his, his portable terminal and it's all muddy. He's like, oh, there's mud in the 
Communication thingies. Oh, oh. He just looks at you. Oh, and then, then he realizes who he's talking to. And then he kind of darts his eyes away. Like he's ju- just not trying to look at your, at your face. And then after this initial like shock, he starts to get a little bit more withdrawn again. Like personality wise. Like he's shying up here a little bit. Well, uh, continue. August, I'm so sorry. Is your computer okay? Uh, and he goes, well, um, this particular model has been designed to withstand a significant impact. In fact, uh, here it's rumored that you could drive it over with a big boss and it would only have, you know, a residual damage uh, to the monitor, which is not really all that bad when you actually have, you know, uh, a, 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 a direct link to... Um, the, and he notices that you might not be paying the most attention. She's, she's doing, you know, one of those smile and nod things. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's, in a very Mila way. <laughs> okay, which means a really big smile. Yeah. Um, and he just pauses and he just looks at you and he goes, uh, and no, you, did, you didn't hurt it. Um, uh, so, how are you doing? <laughs> So, your project's going good, then? Oh, um, no. <laughs> he oh. says, Do I'm you... thinking about quitting, he says. What? No, you can't quit, August. You're so smart. Uh, he goes, oh. And he adjusts, not adjusts his glasses, but he, he realigns his glasses. And he goes, ah, oh, I, I don't know. Sometimes I think I'm pretty smart, but... You know, some of the stuff that the Red Suns are having me do, I just, I, 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 uh, they expect too much and give me so little, you know, time and resources. And uh, I don't mean quit doing what I do, just quit, you know, doing stuff for. Them. I have an idea. Mm. Do you want to see a spaceship? <laughs> he goes. A what? A ship that can go into space? He goes, if this is some sort of joke, I, I don't really No, think. August, you're smart. I'm sure Patrick would love to show you. You, you, where, where, okay, roll me, <laughs> roll me, like, roll me a, like, a flirty convincey checky. Oh! oh. 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 He goes, oh, no. Oh. Oh, no, no, he'll be like, He'll just look away and he'll be like, no, no, no. <clears throat> Come on. You don't, you, you, you I, 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 I know what, you know, women expect of me. You know, that has happened. They say, oh, yeah, let's come and we'll have a drink and we'll, we'll, we'll talk. And no, they just want to give me some more work or they want me to buy them things and I'm... No, I've been burned one too many times, he says. I'm I'm not interested in going to see your... And he puts it... He actually raises... Like, he rests his computer in between his legs so he can bring up both hands and give air quotations of spaceship. And then he'll collect his arm again. Uh, Kriana, do you mind if I do something real quick or jump in real go, fast? Or? Go, go for right. it. We're standing in the middle of the street, right? Mm-hmm. Al's going to be like, okay, they're in the street. We don't want to draw attention. He'll come up and he'll be like, Mila, who's your friend? Hmm. Pony ears, this is my good friend, August. Oh, we barely know each other. Uh, hello, August Keach, he says. He Hi. He goes to, he offers his hand. Uh, he, uh, Al will shake it a little bit and then like glance around and say, what are you guys talking about, Mila? I was going to show him the spaceship. Right. He gives a snort. Mm. The spaceship. Well, then August, and again, looking at the street, let's go see the spaceship. What? Yeah, this- we can go see the spaceship together like a family. <laughs> and Al's going to start <laughs> guiding him along because we can't keep here. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, wait, 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 wait. Um, you have a natural spaceship? 
And Al will nod. And he'll say, I'm not exactly the best on these matters, but yes, from what I understand, it did and could go to space. August is a little bit more pliable at this point. He goes, well, I, I just want you to know, if this is some sort of ruse, I, I can protect myself. I'm sure you can. <laughs> I got Alice. chocolate milk, too. You can use my cup. All right, roll me another convince check, Mila. <laughs> Would she get any bonus for me? I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't worry. Okay. He's just he, he. No, what he does is he looks longingly over to Mila, but he's like, "I'll follow you, sir." What's your name? Uh, my name is Al. Lead on. Al, he says, and as you walk away, despite Mila's attempts, August is staying right close to Al um, and just giving like little suspicious glances over to Mila. Mila uh, would your just failures be... make... He, he, he just thinks you have nefarious intent with him. <laughs> Al, Al <laughs> will look back at Mila. Al will look mm -hmm. back at oh, Mila God. and apologetically shrug. Like, he doesn't even know what's going on. He just knows you that they can't... up a rat. I know! You just picked up some guy! Yeah! All right. Al's just like, we can't stay here. I trust Mila. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first mistake. No, yeah, there you go. Al, it's not like it's the first time Al's trust has burned him. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so... Oh my god, I was not planning on this scene, but let's do it. Okay, wait. All right. Wait, logistics out of the way first. Hi, Rath, bless you. <laughs> I, think... <laughs> I'm like, I didn't sneeze. Wait, wait a second. Oh, he's still in character. All right. Oh, my God. Don't tell Ty Rath about this. He might love it. Uh, so. Welcome to the cult of Ty Rath. Oh, my God. All right, so. <laughs> So, the refugees, I'm assuming you get them settled in the behemoth, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So. Wounded individuals, two of them are not very mobile whatsoever. They have sustained chronic long-term injury that requires a long-term recovery. They have been just resting um, on the floor, unfortunately. They've been trying to make comfortable as much as they could with, like, sheets and pillows and whatnot. But... Um, unless you want to put them on in an, on an actual bed, um, the cot in the the cots in the rapidly filling up cots in the med bay is free. Now, you you have four of them, right? Uh, Elizabeth is on one, so you got three free, and of course James T really likes his own cot for some reason, but you have enough space to put them there if you choose to. Okay. Don't we need to get... Mm -hmm. Wait, what are we doing with Elizabeth? Do we figure out what we're doing with her? Uh, we, we have her sedated. Yes, yeah, sedated oh. with Pamel, right? Oh, right, Pamel, that's right. Okay. I think okay. it would be best for everyone if we just don't put anyone in the infirmary. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. So, um, where are you going to put the wounded individuals? I will treat them in a place where uh, I would assume the loft we can make fairly comfortable. And it, it, is there anyone who needs immediate medical care where I would need to oh. treat them in the infirmary? Okay. Then I would set up a pr impromptu infirmary in the loft, which I would uh, assume, again, okay. I don't want to make choices for the group unless someone doesn't want that. I think that would be the best place to do it. Well, don't forget that each of the rooms that we have mm -hmm. are actually built for four people. Oh, I did forget that. Yeah. Yes. Then. So if we want, like, either you or I could give up our rooms and four people each can sleep in there because those are actual beds. Yeah, Al would be <clears> fine <throat> with that. He's trying to meditate anyway. It's not working, but. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He'll get it eventually. He just needs practice. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Um, all right. So. You got the wounded individuals. The rest of them you can make space for, right? The behemoth is rather big. It's more cramped than you guys are used to, that's for sure, but it doesn't necessarily make it so jam-packed, right? Of course, mm -hmm. these individuals are extremely grateful for your assistance, and I will continue to uh, role-play conversations with them 
next session. I think we're going to just wind hmm. things down a little bit. But let's let's deal with August now. <laughs> oh, okay. So August steps in, and may I assume that introductions are made with Mr. Keach? Sure. Okay. So after initial introductions, he says, I, I believe, and he says still slightly skeptically, there was word of a spaceship. You like spaceships? I am Patrick. interested in them. Although I find the likelihood of a true, authentic specimen to be very unlikely. But I'm humoring <laughs> this I just like, like, kind of going down the hallway where it's going, just kind of like waving his arm over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, August will follow you, just continuing to talk about how unlikely this is and... How it's the you, fantasy of a pretty girl's head, and so forth. Patrick is, is like, hopping up and down. <laughs> Mila's hopping with Patrick. Skipping a little bit, still waving him this way. She will, Tom she is will just sort of following. Patrick. <laughs> She'll do a little twirl around Patrick. <laughs> flourish. Uh, I'll oh, just boy. point out, Al's, Al's going to be treating, whether they need it or not, making sure no one needs treatment or giving whatever, so he will not be with there. Okay. And he's going to go into the workshop with all the really mm -hmm. neat workshop stuff going on and going to lead him into the room and kind of arm arm gesture similarly what he did with uh, Sam, I believe. Yes, Max. 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 All right. It's okay. okay. Max. <laughs> all right. So with that, August, uh... August actually takes a step and a single finger, and he taps at it. He goes, hmm, 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 hmm. Well, there's an 80% certainty that this is authentic, although it could be just a very, very, very good replication. How do you know it's up in space? How I know it was up in space? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. well, from somebody who can, I'm not even sure how they do it, but uh, they can like sort of speak with electronics. Uh, <laughs> yes, telemechanics. Yes. I yes. had one check out this behemoth, and that and apparently that was actually built in space. Mm -hmm. Really? He says. Yeah. Well, it's a little hard to believe, but from what sort of uh, uh, materials that it's made of, yeah, I can see that. Okay. You have a, a small conversation in regards to the materials that it's made of. And afterwards, August, his face looks less skeptical and more impressed. And he looks over to Mila and he goes, I have to say, I thought this was a ruse. Why, but, why would it be a ruse? She looks really confused. It's because spaceships are actually really hard to come by. I'm very happy I found this. They are hard to come by? Yeah. It's actually oh, really surprised that... That's... Patrick, is that why you're always working on it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, Patrick, I had no idea. And just the added benefit that it can go into space? Mm. Mm. And August says, Huh. So, what, uh, what uh, outfit do you folks work for? Yes. <laughs> no, that would. Mm. His eyes <laughs> look over to Patrick. Um, <laughs> we work for Tyreth, the. Um, <laughs> shoot, I can't remember. <laughs> what his actual name is? Um, well, Tyreth the Undying. Eternal, the Undying. Eternal. Yeah. Yes, eternal. I'll go with eternal. <laughs> yeah. You were. I. I've never heard of this Tyrath fellow. Hmm. Hmm. He. He likes to keep it close to the vest, play in the shadows, that kind of thing. Hmm. Okay. Cloak and dagger operation. I see. I see. I see. Sort of. Um. We. We mostly can do whatever the hell we want. Um, really. Every once. Wait. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Okay. Keep. Keep talking. Every once in a while, he has us. You know. 
go to this certain place and you know get some moss or something and then give it to him but most of the time we don't we can do whatever we want like oh hey there's this ruins hey let's go exploring <laughs> that kind of thing speaking of so you're saying ruins <laughs> <laughs> August is starting to get a little overwhelmed here. <laughs> uh, goes, um, wait, wait, okay. I can see the lack of organization very clear in this operation. Before, before I, I ask, uh, answer any questions, I would like to ask a few more, if I may. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, okay. Um, so your paymaster, this Tyrath fellow, he uh, gives you. Uh, he just gives you small tasks to do, and otherwise you are free to uh, pursue your own interests. Yes. Yeah. Essentially. Uh, uh, has he made you sign a contract? Mm, no. He just asks us to do stuff, and upon completion, we're rewarded. Are, are the rewards good? Is is it a significant fiscal, uh, you know, gain? I would say, I would say yes. I'm not quite sure about a fiscal game. <laughs> How was your, um, he takes a look around, I, I see you have a behemoth, Mark 23, that's impressive, that's for sure. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of um, electronic equipment do you have? Oh, I, I, I wouldn't know the first thing about that. Patrick? Um... Currently, I have a personal computer, but I think you're more talking about the <laughs> the. Uh, would you want to know equipment or? Yeah, you know, sensory equipment, uh, telecommunication, security, uh, computers, uh, the whole shebang. You don't have to actually explain character. You can just give them a lowdown with what you have if you wish. All right. Um, I'll give them the the general basis of what things are sort of up and running and what sort of tools and the okay. the type of personal computer I have because I do remember that it was like some sort of weird advanced one where it's like I had like an, an update that kind of doesn't exist for some reason. I don't, I don't remember. I found it in the junkyard if I remember correctly. Mm. Yeah. Same same actual junkyard that we found this. Mm. It's good stuff. Yeah. He pauses for a moment. He says, "Would you be hiring? Perhaps." Tyrath would. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, I mean, I, I, I am. Uh, I have significant assets, um, both um, <clears throat> legal and otherwise, in which I can access uh, many computer systems, uh, interface with any sort of graphic user interfaces. And otherwise, uh, be very, very, f very, very familiar with all things uh, digital. Hmm. I would be a significant asset, considering your tools. In addition, in addition I could be a very good advisor. Uh, there's only one small problem. <clears throat> I am currently under contract with the Red Suns for the next three months, 14 days. And uh, he looks at his watch. 16 hours, not that I'm uh, counting or anything. Um, so I wouldn't be able to be in your service if you were interested and if Mr. Tyrath would be uh, interested as well. Um, but uh, suffice to say, my contract would be up relatively soon and I would ask that you perhaps would uh, keep me in mind. Um, or perhaps uh, if I could demonstrate my skill, you may wish to mm, buy out my contract with the Red Suns. Well, how how much is your contract with the Red Suns? Like, uh, how much uh, would it be to buy it out? Oh, um, he goes, I would have to look at my contract. Give me a moment, he says, as he picks up his slightly muddy um, personal computer. Um, while mm -hmm. you do that, uh, I will um, go and grab my friend. Uh, and um, okay. I, I, I was going to say, unless, unless there's a serious objection with the group, about that time, you hear over the PA, I'll say, everyone, please get comfortable and sit down. We're about to take off. Um, it's going to be a fairly smooth ride, but oh, uh, shit. try not to move around too much. <laughs> and then he's going to uh, start. Uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Because <laughs> no one's told Al anything. The last thing he knew is that I we're know. going. <laughs> 
Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> gonna rush We're kidnapping you, oh, yes. We're <laughs> kidnapping you, oh, yes. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Al. <laughs> Before you do that, I need to talk to you for a second. Oh, Please my God. You, you, you get a response back. I'm in. Uh, you know where to find me. <laughs> I can't drive and talk at the same time. <laughs> Guys, you're kidnapping my NPC. <laughs> oh my god, stop. Stop the boat. Stop. Well, <laughs> you're coming with us. Now. Um, you're now our NPC. <laughs> okay. um, your, your name was August, right? Yes. Right? Um, just. Wait here, I'm gonna try and resolve this, and he's gonna blow up. Don't worry, August! What do you mean, don't worry? <laughs> You're moving! We'll fix your computer. Of course we're moving, August, come on! <laughs> Where are we moving to, he asks? I don't know, actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pee myself, I'm laughing so hard. There's people sleeping, I'm trying so hard. <laughs> okay. Alright, what are you guys doing well, next? I guess Tom would come running to the cockpit. <laughs> oh, no. Hold. Wait, 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 why don't we just end the session there? <laughs> Good. Okay. You can totally end the session here. Let's end yeah. the session there. Oh my god, mid-kidnap. Mid <laughs> <laughs>